Hello everyone. Welcome to Sylvia's. Thank you for motivating me to make a tutorial and share my method of decoupaging on glass. The list of materials I'll be using is in the description. The fascicled calendar prints you see on the left I've used. Mosaic papers from Stemperia for the lining which are on the right. So let's get started. The first thing is I degrease the surface of the glass with methylated spirit with a cloth and then I position the fussy cut papers from calendar prints I have and some scraps and then once I'm happy with the layout I would proceed to glue I would see the positioning of my papers which I selected and decide over where I have to glue them I use Mod Podge Gloss Luster. I personally like the shine it leaves under the glass when it dries clear. I use a plastic wrap cover of the same rice paper from Stamperia I'll be using ahead. I prefer using longer bristles of the brush and a longer brush as it gives more control on the curvy surface. As a rule of caution, the less the pressure, the lesser the glue marks. Once I've done applying the glue onto the paper, I would use a spray bottle or a mist spare sprayer to use some water and then adhere the paper onto my glass. Once I've screened down the paper, I would take off the plastic sheet and check there are no bubbles. And using a wet wipe, I would gently dab it, splash some water. This allows me to have control over the creases and sticks the paper really well to the surface. Once I'm done taking out the creases and ensure that there are no bubbles, I would wipe out the excess glue. On the flip side, I repeat the same process. For the flip side, I chose this fish which is another rice paper from Stemperia. I shall share the link in the description. Once I'm done adhering the fish to the surface, I'm going to again see the leftover papers and see if I can add more papers to the inner lining of my piece I have this little leftover from the calendar print which we would add to the base. It would give another interest to the base. I'll clean the entire surface before I proceed to do the inner lining. For the inner lining, I've chosen this beautiful mosaic paper from Stamperia, which I've split into half and further I've trimmed down the paper to fit the curvy surface on the glass. I have this leftover rice paper from my previous project. 
While I clean my glass, I also choose to decide wherever I'm going to lay out the rest of the paper on the inlet. This quote from the rice paper says creativity is the greatest expression. Before I line, I'm going to apply this coat onto my glass, maybe near the fish or near the flower, just to add a little more interest in volume. Yes, I like it here, so I'm going to stick it here. As I apply the glue, remember, the lesser the pressure, the lesser the glue marks on the glass. Also, to fit the paper to the rim of the glass, you could add a little cuts to the paper so that it fits really well onto the surface. And once I'm done gluing this paper, I'm going to start lining my glass for the inlay. I'm going to again position the inner lining before I glue it. I have very carefully cut the mosaic tiles and I'll stick them along the glass and along the curvy surfaces very very carefully. As I adhere it to the glass, you see that I, I apply very little pressure so that there are no glue marks later. And the reason I use the gloss luster is that it leaves a really shiny, smooth look once it dries. For the lower part, I cut the sheets along the mosaic pattern and stick tile by tile. I'm going to continue sticking the lining as per the mosaic tile print and grow around the entire glass sticking tile by tile to the curvy base.
Once the lining is done, I apply a coat of Mod Podge and leave it to dry. And then I'm going to take a 150 grit sandpaper and sand the rim of the glass for the any extra paper which is left. For the outer lining, I'm using four card chalk paint. Since my rice paper is transparent, I need to cover it in white to add the outer lining. In case you're using a regular printed paper, you can skip doing the white color. I dried the chalk paint using a hair dryer and now you see that the image inside stands out after the coat of white. You see all the difference it makes. Now I'll be doing the outer lining in the same manner as I did on the inlay. Remember the less the pressure the better the finish. I repeat it a couple of times. Whenever I overlap the mosaic tiles, I stick the base tile first and then I go over along the curve of the glass. This helps me maintain the sink of my print. I plan to paste the floral prints and my leftover fussy cutouts wherever there are overlaps or the visible joints of these outer lining of the mosaic sheet.
I haven't done the mosaic tiles here because anyways I'm gonna put my peony flower over the top. Before I stick the peony flower, I'm gonna use my sharpie pens to kind of blend into the color so that there's no visible scissor marks or no white marks. The ink of these pens does not bleed with my glue or varnish, hence it is a preference to use these pens. You could use acrylic colors too for blending. Once I'm done with the blending of all my papers and have covered all the white marks, I'll be gluing all my papers onto the glass. Here, I'll be adhering the paper onto the glass, seeing where it fits. The red peony is looking beautiful already on the glass. It's making a huge difference and it's popping out the entire piece. On the flip side, I see the overlaps of the joints where I cover with the rest of the paper or the flowers I have and paper scraps I have, I've saved from my previous projects. I position and stick the rest of the cutouts and voila, doesn't it already look pretty? I stick this little leaf at the bottom of the glass to carry along the print. I 
thought of extending the same print to the base of the glass with the leftover tiles I have from the paper. So I'm going to glue on the reverse side of the glass. I've cut these tiles into the mosaic print. And I glue piece by piece. I wipe off the excess glue under each tile and see that the glass is clear. I hair dry the glue and I choose the same uh, chalk paint which I used. I sponge dub color white under each tile so that it's clearly visible. And then I take a wet sea sponge, splash some more water and I'm going to take white and just a little bit of green and I'll be sea sponging at the base of the glass. This is going to give it a blended base which adds a newer dimension to the entire base. I used Cadence metallic gold across the rim of the glass. Here on my palette I have this color and I'm going to apply it with the sea sponge along the surface. You could also use your finger to blend it across the rim of the glass. I kind of like using a sponge dauber. And as a last step, I sealed the entire piece with glossy wash varnish by Asian Paints. I gave it four coats of varnish and drying it well between each coat. I prefer using normal dry that is air drying the varnish coats rather than using a blow dryer or a heat gun. That kind of gives it nice shine. Thank you for watching.